Okay, let's start on this sketch that we're going to do this time for the Great Wall of China. Now, this is not a subject that I would be familiar with, but it is one that we are doing for part of our September challenge. So I've chosen the Great Wall of China, which could be quite challenging as a rule. But what I did do, I did go to Pinterest and I did find some reference which suited me. That means that I can choose something that I wanted and I quite like those two buildings, structures, which meant that I could then put the steps in and swing a bit of that pathway in that's here. And then connect the whole thing with trees because that's actually what was in the photo and that was just perfect. So what I'll do now is I'm going to start with the China graph, which I always do when I begin anything and I put it around tops and sides. And you'll see the effect of that when I put the color on a bit later. So let's start with the China graph. And here we go. Round the side of that building up the top. It's going to be quite rough. I don't do things very neatly, really. That might horrify some people, but I like loose, loose, loose. And then I'll come down those. I think I might go down the tops of that. There, I'm... I haven't done this before, so this one, like a lot of things, is always, everything's an experiment really, isn't it? You never quite know what you're going to end up, and that's part of the fun, I like that. I, I like not really quite knowing what's going to happen. I'll put that around there, there's sort of turret things there, and I'll go down the side of that. And Oops, oh well, so be it. Down the steps, I think I've done that. Now I'm going to go on top of this wall. It seems to be on that side, it was a plain wall, and on this side, it seemed to have what I call turrets. So I'm going down there. Press quite hard. If you do it too lightly, your paint won't resist, it'll just go straight over. Now I'm going to do something on the trees as well. So, okay, over the top of them, every single one, because I want as much definition as I can get between all the elements. The trees are incredibly good for disguising things that you don't want to have to explain. And that's what I don't want to have to figure out what is between all those things. Trees are good. Around we go. Taking a moment this one because there's quite a bit to do. That one there, haven't done that. Over there, a bit of a mountain in the background, so that's good. It does show that it's a really hilly area. Oops, there we go. Nothing matters, you know. You can't make mistakes because you just let it be. Let it be. I'm sure there's a song in that. Okay, I think I've done all that. You can still look sideways and just see where you've been. There's one there I haven't done. By the way, when you're doing China graph, you don't need it much more than that. You don't need to sharpen it to a big fat point because it will break. It's like a lipstick. It'll just come off. Right here. Now, I took the liberty of laying my paints out already because this is the order I do them in. Whoops, there's a bit of green gone in there. Go. I don't want any other colour in anything. I never want mixed colours. I do one over the other. So I always would start in this sort of thing with the yellow ochre, as you can see. And my book is on a slight angle because you need to run it down. Let the paint run. All right, I'll start at the top. And I'll just let it go and you'll surely see the paint starting to come down. I'm not going to do the whole of that building. I don't need to. I'll do part of the wall. Yeah, swing it in. You can start to see already the form of everything here. And that's, I don't know why I'm doing that, but I am. And then I'm going to go in with the red. This order is what I tend to do. I do use a lot of yellow ochre, cad red, ultramarine. There's my three go-tos. So I'm going to run a bit of that in. Might actually need more. Just checking. Cross that building down. You can change your mind if you think there's too much in it, but I'll let that run. I'm hoping it'll start to run down any minute. It looks like I could use that red on there. I tend to paint downwards. I'm not a cross a crossways, sideways painter. This is easier for my paint to do that bloom thing we talk about, or the tip of the brush. I'm going along there, but generally I would paint downwards because that's going to give me the 
the blending thing that we're looking for. I'm going to drop a bit more red in there on this front building because I want to see what happens. Want that in there. And I might even put a little bit in there and down that bit just for the fun of it. The front one technically should be brighter than the other one, but you know, stuff happens. And I might even do a little bit of warm on that pathway there, but I'll do something more later on it. Now I'm going in with my blue, my ultramarine blue. Don't want too, too much, but I just want to cool it down a bit. And that's what it'll do. It'll just cool it down. Maybe a bit. Oh, look at that. It's not, that's trees. We can deal with that when we want. Up there, down. Clean the brush if you need to. If it picks up too much paint from a previous one, wash it. You've got your water there. Quite like what's going on there. I might even pop a bit of that in there if there's any room left. China grass probably overtaken the lot. Yeah, okay, I might go in those doors, in the doorways. There, and there, and there. Oops. You can always tidy up, you know, that's why we have a, a Posca pen, but I don't know if that would be what I do here. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of blue on the edge of the wall, down there, down there, to there. And on the other side of this wall here, it actually goes a long way down, so I might just do that. There, we're getting some interesting colour. Now, we've only used three colours, but you see how much you get. Now, I'm going to do those trees. And I'm probably going to use a purplish colour around there and a brighter green around the front. I think that would look good. I'm visualising it in my head what kind of colours that I would like to have. Okay, that's running in. Oh, I like that. That's nice. These are colours you wouldn't actually make yourself because the paint does it for you. It does the work. You don't have to do it. Let it, let it go. Down, all right. Whoops, keep those colours clean, Mrs Hill. You've got a bit of a thing there. Now what I want to do is, I think I will use this green again here, but I really want to get some other colour coming in. I might make it quite light and then just apply this purple I have in my head that I'm quite sure is going to be the answer. <clears throat> but I think I will before that go in with some hookers green to get the foreground a bit deeper. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you've got to go back to the pot, but look, if you've got all the paint there, you just pop it in, mix it a bit more. More pigment, less pigment, whatever it is, whatever it is you're looking to do. You can get a lot of colour out of one colour. You get lights and darks and things over here, down there. I think I'll go in there too. That's where I went completely outside the line. Okay, over here bit more of that in the brush down there a bit I might just go in there like that and I'm going to do uh, this is an interesting one I'm going to try cerulean for some of those backs because I want to see what happens when I put some purpley color on that just to take it back I even go in there. But if I do, I will focus quite a bit around connecting. That's my thing is connecting elements, which you can see from the composition that I've chosen. We are connecting the rut this here comes down to here, comes down to here. So you kept within within the whole sketch. The whole story now i'll go in the back i'll even go there because i'll change some color oh there's a bit of wall i could add a bit more pink to that thing something's sticking out there that's right i've gone here a little bit of that there because it seems to be a secret wall coming there i might do that too now and now i want to try this who knows who knows 
part of what we do, isn't it? We just try stuff. It really works beautifully over the hooker's green. It always does. What happens over the cerulean? It's nice. Right up against the building. We want to get this with, a, with its white edges. The whole thing is that if we go dark behind it, it's going to give you dimension. That's what we want. Might just do a bit more of that over here. Over here. Ah, uh, yeah, down there. Down there. I want to get a little more of this sort of in the background a bit here. And then I'll put more purple in those hills because I tend to do that thing where you put purple goes back. Blue or purple takes you back. Warm brings you forward. That's why I do it on the pathways the way I do. I just want those hills there. They should be quite pale, but for the sake of this, they are going to be that colour. They will. Now, I'm going to put the sky in. I tend to do cobalt, so I have to squeeze it in around the edge of the ultramarine because it's slightly sharper than ultramarine, which is pretty subtle. Now I'm going around here, down here, along here, around my birds, and down there and over there and over there. Now, what I might just do is a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this and a bit of that, and I'll soften those off. It's very colourful and that's what I quite like. I still need to get a bit more depth going on in here though. Haven't got quite there yet. It usually means you've got to go back and just pick up stuff. Clean brush with water, you will soften edges very easily. No scrubbing, just go around the edge because it's not dry yet anyway. There we go. Loose as, loose as up here we can go. I don't mind if there's a little bit of that brushwork left. Really, I don't. In fact, I don't think I mind anything really. I don't care what comes out on the page, I just let it be. The last thing I do is worry about whether it looks like what it should. Provided, if you're really worried, make sure you've got the name there, then you'll know what it is. Now I'm going to do a little bit more of the hookers on those greens that come in here. Up we go, just so that we do know it's forest. Yeah. Like that. I think that's pretty good. Bit down here. You just pop bits of colour in. This is where you play now because it's not dry, so it will take whatever you do quite well. No, I've got to go a bit more around that one there. It's got so much other colour on it. Yeah. There's a little bit of Posca work will be done at the end when it's dry, just to define those sort of things that get covered in paint. Might go in here. Actually, while I've got the blue, I'll go down here too. Down the base of that wall. Do that actually there. Uh, I'm nearly pretty much done. What I will do is I'll do what I sometimes do is I'll let it just move it around a bit so that the paint will do other things that will go. Is that working? Can you see that? You're not answering me. <laughs> okay, I'll let it go around here again. Then I'll put it back on my little stand here. And then let it, I'll just let it go into the colours. I might soften that up. I think I'm actually done. I'm pretty sure that's all I want to do. So look, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'll show you the finished thing as a photo as well, but I might just do a little more Posca and then we're done. Okay, enjoy this one.